Good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining us tonight for the RACGP CPD update. My name is Bertha Harvey, and I'm the CPD and Events Manager at Central East and Sydney PHN. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians and sovereign people of the land across which we work. I recognise the continuing connection to land, water and community and pay respects to Elders past, present and emerging. I would also like to extend that respect to any Aboriginal colleagues joining us tonight. I would now like to introduce our GP facilitator for tonight, Dr Margot Woods, who is a local practising GP in the Inner West and also a member of our CPD Advisory Committee. Thank you, Margot. Thanks so much, Bertha. I'd like to also acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of the land that we were all on um, and particularly say welcome to everyone for our first CPD event for 2023 and it probably couldn't be for more an important a subject as the one tonight because this will be what all our learning will be based on as we go through the next triennium. Um, so really keen to hear um, and learn a lot myself tonight. So I'd like to welcome Sharon Staffstrom. She's the CPD, CPD Engagement Manager at the federal level for the, the College of um, General Practice. And we've got two um, local for also New South Wales ACT faculty um, CPD experts here with us as well. So Kimberly Coulton and Angelique Tere. So welcome. Um, when we do the questions tonight, please put them in the chat. Um, we will be a little bit more dynamic, won't we, Sharon? So we, we will, will maybe jump in with some questions if there's something that's pressing at the moment, but pop them all in the chat as we go along so we can see what you need to know. So over to you, Sharon. Thank you so much. Thank you and welcome, everyone. I'm just going to... Um... I'm coming to you from Perth today, so it's a little bit sunny and a little bit um, earlier in the day, um, sharing with the two girls from New South Wales. So I'm going to go through a presentation first, and then I'm going to go through live on our dashboard. I have received some questions beforehand, just to let you know, hoping to cover all of them, hoping to stop for questions as well, as um, Margot said, going through. We'll also have time at the end for questions. If we don't get to all of them, what we will be doing is sharing um, the video, as Bertha said, but we'll also make sure from a college perspective that we'll send through the answers to any unanswered questions as well. So I'll just start the presentation before and we'll do that before we go live to our website and go through activities as as you would be seeing them um, when you would, would would do them yourselves. So um, obviously it's a new look CPD in 2023 um, and RACGP is the home of choice for general practice. Um, just to go through some learning outcomes tonight I've, I've amended slightly the ones that came through because I want to make really clear about what we're going to go through. Um, we are going to go through briefly the Medical Board of Australia's changes to CPD for all registered doctors. We'll be describing the updated CPD, you'll be able to update the CPD website, you'll be able to use it functionally and I'd love you to all as homework to actually jump on, log on and um, have a go as, as we're doing this or afterwards or even tomorrow and share it with your colleagues. Um, we'll also go through some solutions for a mainstream GP, locum GP, special interest GP and supervisor because we do actually have a really broad range of ways that you can capture the hours um, that meet the requirements by doing the work that you're already doing. So not having to go and do anything necessarily different. You can still go and do courses with your local providers such as um, the PHN um, and other providers around or also to the capture that work that you're doing both for the college, with the college and also what you're doing in practice. So we'll go through a few of those different things tonight. So just a refresher, I'm not going to go into this in detail because I will show you on our website where everything is if you need to find it and you'd like some more information. So really the major changes that are coming through are around the introduction of CPD homes. And as I said, RACGP is a, is a home. All the medical specialist college currently are CPD homes. There's been an introduction by the medical board for a professional development plan um, for all doctors. We are going to go through an actual PDP today and have a look at how that goes um, and what's required. Also, doctors are required to do different types of CPD. And the medical board said that's to improve the value of professional development. And those different types of CPD is basically breaking down things into educational activities, reviewing performance and measuring outcomes. And we'll go through a little bit of that in a minute. And also, there's a requirement to do 50 hours of CPD each year. Now, what I will say to this is it is an annual requirement now, not a triennium requirement to do those 50 hours. Um, the college does have one other requirement, which is CPR every three years, but otherwise everything is annual. So you'll find that the college follows up with you um, as your CPD home and supports you regularly throughout the year, much more closer to the end of the year to assist you to meet all of those requirements as well. 
So just to go through that again, this is a, we have a triennium for the RACGP for GPs, but the annual requirements, which is the 50 hours are made up of the three MBA categories. You do CPR once per triennium, you do your annual professional development plan and the CPD home. Now, the MBA has also put some requirements in under those three CPD activity types about how they're broken down for you. Now, what it is, and as I said, this information is all on our website, there's educational activities and then there's a minimum requirement per year, and it's a calendar year, so this started on the 1st of January, to do 12 and a half hours of educational activities per year, to do five hours each of reviewing performance and measuring outcomes, you need to do a total of 25 hours in reviewing performance and or measuring outcomes in total, and then another 12 and a half in any activity type, which sounds really complex, um, but it can be made up of a really a variety of different things, and it can be designed to suit your scope. So for instance, some GPs might spend lots of time doing clinical audits. So they therefore might spend more hours over an annual cycle doing measuring outcomes. Other GPs might spend lots of time doing place-based discussions, those types of things, which means they'll be able to collect more of those hours in reviewing performance. Or some GPs might go and spend lots of time doing more um, educational-based reading, um, attending conferences and things like that. So there's a lot of variety and it really is about suiting your scope of practice. Now, Again, there's lots of information here. We'll, we'll put it up for you and we'll send it through. But just as a really, and I'm not going to read all the words, just a summary, educational activities are those things like lectures, webinars, workshops, reading, podcasts and courses. Reviewing performance activities uh, is included things that are reflecting about your work and, that and receiving feedback. And that feedback might come from patients, peers, or even from yourself. So things like case-based discussion and things that require reflection where information is where the learning occurs and result in improved capability in your scope of practice is something that's um, a reviewing performance activity. And MCQ, so um, multiple choice question, is a reviewing performance activity if you get feedback on your answers, whether they're correct or incorrect. Um, measuring outcomes, that is really around using data. So activities that use your work data to ensure quality results. So things like audits. Now, when we talk about audits this year, we can actually talk about a bigger audit that you're used to doing or even a mini audit as well. Now we will have um, different templates or we have already different templates, different examples of these types of activities for you. But just to break it down a little bit more, is that these courses and things. So if you were to think about it, an example of a, you might go to a musculoskeletal workshop, an all day workshop that used to be worth um, 40 points and it would be made up of some didactic information. So some lectures and that part of it is going to be education. You might also have some um, hands-on skills-based um, activity. And when you're doing that part of the skills-based activity, that is actually reviewing performance. So. You can see that already some of the activities are what we call hybrid. So that means you're collecting two types of CPD activities just by attending one activity type. And that mix of activity types or hybrids can be um, through RACGP, it can be through a provider, or it can even be quick logged, which means that you're going to be, um, you might go to work something at your workplace um, and it might be a mixture of the two or three and you can self log that yourself and we're actually going to go through that as well. Now, obviously, if you go along to a provider activity um, through or through a college activity, those hours, that breakdown of hours be uploaded on your behalf. Um, for providers, it can take um, we say up to 30 days, we're really encouraging them to do it as soon as possible. But otherwise, if you do it yourself and I'll show you tonight, it'll be up there nearly instantly as well. So that's the type of breakdowns we'll see. And I'm gonna, we've got examples of all of these throughout our website. Reviewing performance, and sorry, it's, I've just noticed it's a little blurry, um, are things like mini audits and audits. And this is a um, reviewing performance and measuring outcomes because often when you do an audit, you're actually looking at the data and then you are looking at what activity you're doing and how is that related to the data um, or against the clinical standard and you might make some changes and you'll be reviewing and reflecting and receiving feedback on that. Um, again, these can be quick logged through our system. Um, it can be a GP led activity. So you can do this in your practice and you can upload with, for other GPs that do that with you. So there is lots of different types of ways to capture the work that you're doing in everyday practice. So 
And some of these can be individual GP activities or they can be group learning activities. So evidence-based medicine journal club just, um, are often activities for us that are a real mixture of educational activities and reviewing performance. Um, it can be virtual, it can be face-to-face, -face, it can be done in a variety of different ways, but it really is a way that can be um, enable you to be capturing hours. Same with the peer group learning. If you're having those um, activities and discussion groups in your clinic, they can be covered under peer group learning. It could be that you're involved in a project ECHO. Um, it could be through other case reviewers and analysis as well, that all of those things can be captured. Now, peer group learning can be captured by yourselves as a group, as a practice. It can be outside of a practice based on a topic, or it even can be set up by a provider and done for you. So there's lots of different ways that can happen. So just to finish off around some of the summary of the activities that we'll be going through in a minute on our CPD home website, um, it really is that personal hub of information for you. Um, and it will show you show you whenever you're there, the progress towards meeting those requirements. So how many hours are captured in each particular type? It will show you the, your PDP, your um, professional development plan. It's got a really great browse function, which will go through on provider-led activities, including the college and all of those other providers, your CPD statement, history, how to log, um, activities, the significant number of guides and resources now, also links to your previous training so that you can reflect or if you need to find evidence of something, and also the contact details of your local CPD team. So just like Angelique and Kimberly, they are here to assist. They are um, local and based in New South Wales. You can visit them in the faculty at certain times and they're always available to help. So what I might do now is just stop sharing for a minute and I'll go to our website. Um, was there any questions or anything, Margot, prior to me going to the website? Um, we, we'd had a question about where the check program, and I guess that was another good example of potentially a hybrid it activity. Is. Look, absolutely. And to be honest, a check was one of the very first activities we brought across into the new triennium. Um, and we have remapped it and it is absolutely a hybrid activity. Every case within check, so the way we've mapped them, every case within check is worth one hour of educational activities and one hour of reviewing performance. So by doing your regular check activity, which is really meaningful clinical um, updates and reflection, you're able to capture a significant amount of your hours that, that you're required each year. Yeah, well, that's very useful. The other one was really about, um, I guess it's a very big question, how do we measure outcome? And you've already mentioned a couple of things such as doing audits and things. So maybe we can enlarge upon other ways of measuring outcome as you Yeah, keep what going. I might do as we go through mm. and I'll show you where all the resources are and we've got lots of different, so I could list, I can list a couple, mm. but I'll show you some examples as we go through and where to find that information for you all as well. So let me just go to the website. Now, the website I've got just to let you know, this is live at the moment. It's just needing to be refreshed. Okay, now this is um, the website as you would see it. The only difference to what you would see, you wouldn't have this impersonate IMIS user here. What that means is when you call myself, when you call um, in Angelique or Kimberly, they can actually put your number in here. And they can, once they've confirmed it's you, they can then see all of your details and activities exactly as you see them. So they can really help you really effectively and know where you're at and what, what type of assistance you might need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go through this website with you to show you where to find things because most, actually nearly everything that you might need is here. So you can see on this front landing page, you can see um, it welcomes you. It's got the, the year that we're in because um, it really is about that annual cycle now. You can see at the moment I've done out of 50 total hours minimum that I've required, I've done 13 and a half. I've met one of my four annual requirements and I haven't met my RACGP requirement, which is the B, which is CPR. Um, now you can see here, educational activities, you can see this, it's darker around. I've met of the minimum requirements, I've met three of the 12 and a half hours that are required. You can see if I go down, I've got reviewing performance and measuring outcomes. And you can see that there's a total of 25 hours required. I've done 10 and a half already. I've got a green tick against reviewing performance and it states completed, but I've only got four out of five hours of my minimum of reviewing of measuring outcomes. And once I have another hour, that will be ticked but I'll need to fill the circle. So you can see these are very constant and be updated to what's been uploaded to see what you need to do. Um, 
and you can see this final one that if something tops over, you can see an additional 12 and a half hours that I need that can be made up of anything will slowly fill up as well. So that's where you'll see where you're up to in terms of your current requirements and how much you have to go before the end of the year. And there's lots of time. Um, now, you can also see here's your professional development plan. Here's where you do um, your CPR and access your statement. I'm just going to give you an overview and then I'm going to click into some of these. We've also got a link here to resources, to any info extra information about your annual CPD requirements. And we've got a really comprehensive activity guide as well that I'm going to go through in just a minute. And if for some reason anyone on the line hasn't finished their 2022, 20 to 22 requirements, there is the ability to finish that here as well. It has finished. Um, we urge people to, if they haven't to, to do it as soon as possible. So there's our basic information. I'm going to click into PDP, the professional development plan now, and then CPR. And then Margot, we might break for a minute just after that. And then I'm going to go through how to how to use browse, how to log information and how to find your history. So I'll just look at the PDP. Now I've completed this PDP. Um, I think I did it just using, I think I just typed some words in, which I would suggest that you not do, but I want to edit it. So I'm going to just clear it because what I want to show you is how simple it is to use. So current situation, full-time GP. Now, we'd obviously like you to type in a little bit more. And I know, Margot, you said you'd filled in yours in the last couple of days. Yep. My learning goals, um, I'm going to put women's health, dermatology, um, and also mental health. Now, as I said, you can definitely add some additional information. But you can see also we've given you sample responses. So if you're not sure what to put, we've got samples here for you to give you an example of what to put. And you can see here learning goals. You can see here there's some examples of learning goals as well. And you can see we've got lots of characters. So there's lots of room to put what you'd like. Um, my reflection on culturally safe practice, you can see here um, that there is some additional information and a sample response of what, what to do on that reflection of culturally safe practice. Now, we also would like you to do an annual reflection. Um, what did you learn? How will it change the way you practice? Other areas you'd like to improve as well. And that is the minimum that you need to do for your PDP. But there is some additional information. If you're someone who likes to actually plan some things out, you might go, I think, um, I might go to, let's just say, the Business of General Practice Conference. And I'm going to, that might take me, I think it's going to take about, I think it's about eight hours in total of the Bridges of General Practice Conference. Um, reviewing performance, you see it gives you some examples. P group learning in my practice, we do that once a month. And it's an hour. So over the course of a year, I'm going to put that's, 12 because it really is a case-based discussion type of activity much more than a presentation and measuring outcomes we're going to do um, some midi audits um, and we might be doing I think we'll probably not do much of that and this is just an estimate of what you might do to give you an idea of how it might map out for you um, you can see the annual reflection I'm going to leave that blank here we go um, and sample response um, about dermatology and you can see there I'm just going to copy and paste this one just in there for now so you can just what I want to show I'm not typing it as we go but just to show you how easy it actually is and I'm going to update and you can see the PDP has been updated and you can go back and edit it if you would like to And it's that simple. Okay, so that is the PDP. Now for CPR, because you have a training requirement for CPR, you can see that um, if you tick click on that, it tells you what the requirement is. You can see that there's options to record as a self-directed activity. Also, for those of you that do advanced life support, you can also 
click that there and also browse to find CPD activities. So what I might do, Margot, just because we've gone through a bit of information there before I go through browse and log, was there any questions or comments from anyone? Yes, we've got quite a few questions coming yep. through. Um, I think a lot of it is around things like measuring outcomes. So things like how do I actually estimate the time or measure the time of, of an activity such when I'm measuring um, outcomes? Yeah, so for what I showed you with the PDP, that's a bit of an estimate just to, mm. around your mapping for the year. But when you do an, um, when you are actually doing an audit, whether that's through one of the providers, so I know Sonic does lots, lots of audits and other groups like that, or whether you've got a practice based audit, it really is we'd prop an estimate of the time that you did spend. So we're doing this after you've done the audit. So you're capturing it afterwards around how much time you did spend doing specific things. So how much time was it on that data analysis? How much time was it on those discussions and, and reflection and feedback? So what the medical board's been really clear about is this is you as professionals um, identifying what you have done in what particular activity, especially if you're doing it yourselves in practice, you are, to, are recording that. You aren't required to update, to add, to put in evidence into our RACGP system, but you are required to keep it in case um, Medical Board of Australia or the RACGP has to audit. Now we're required as a CPD home, as every CPD home is to audit 5% of all activities. So you're required to keep it in for that for that purpose but really this is about you as a professional within your practice or however you did that on your own how much time you estimate that you have spent doing that so there's nothing capped in terms of the amount um, we do have a requirement that our system takes a minimum of half an hour blocks of something um, so if you're doing say you're listening to lots of podcasts and you um, say you listen to the good GP um, regularly on different topics you might say okay every month I listen to I think there's a good GP release most months or it could be you're listening to the back back topics as well you might go actually I'm spending probably about two hours a month on on podcasts you might in a word document just or in the in the um the log which I'll show you in a minute document actually one month of good GP these particular topics and you'll put that in and that will count for that so there is a requirement to have some type of evidence um, but not required to upload all the evidence so it really is around what you've done and being able to show what you've done if requested. Fantastic yeah. um, just about around the plan um, is that a dynamic document so can I change what I want to achieve over the year during the year do I have to stick to that? You, you can look just so that you, yeah you can it absolutely is a dynamic document it is a document that we do not share just to let you know the document yep. the pdp isn't shared with the medical board we don't report on anything that is in it we report that it's been completed um yep. it's around what is your scope of practice and obviously when we make a plan like we might plan to go to say i put in at a business of general practice conference which is in adelaide but you for some reason may not get there so you might change what you do and your reflection would be that you changed what you did so there's no we're not going in as a college we're not going in and checking this is your pdp your professional development plan not not for our purposes it's for your purposes fantastic um someone's asking if they're taking personal leave or i imagine maternity leave those sorts of things how does that impact on the number of points they might need to get during that yeah period? look there's there is a um a really clear framework for that that's been given by um the medical board and the college um so it's retrospective so what we need you to do is contact the college afterwards there is um requirements that it needs to be six months or more and depending how long it is there is um a change in what you're required to do and I'll go through in a minute with you we've got a frequently answered question section and we'll actually send that out post this we'll pass it on to um to Bertha and the team so that you get all of that information in writing from us but it is on our website around um exemptions as well um and the other update it, it might come up anyway if you are a new fellow previously they've been exempt um but there is a that that for that first annual cycle so this year if you fellowed this year depending on when you fellow either it's before the end of June or after the 1st of July there is a um, adapted um, both an adapted CPD program but also requirements but also an adapted PDP professional development plan as well yeah 
So a couple of questions around what sort of support um, will the college be able to offer uh, as we progress? And for example, would there be any opportunities for someone to come out to bit practices to support? Or is that something that I mean, may, maybe Bertha can help us with that, whether there might be some support coming through the PHNs? Yeah, look, I, I know um, Bertha and I were speaking just before around how we can, we'll be providing um, actually lots of PHNs on based in Perth with additional information so they can support practices. Um, but from the college perspective, we've got um, Angelique and Kimberly, we've got a CPD team in each state. They are there to support um, on the phone via email, but we absolutely can come to practices. Obviously we've, and I know in WA, especially we've got some limitations with distance. We can come to your practice virtually. I've done quite a number of virtual, just like this, come into a practice at lunchtime or early morning or evening. We can do that. Um, what we're also working with, just to let you all know, is we're working with some of the bigger um, practice I guess, practice owners. So for instance, we've got some major providers that have come on board. So for instance, Sonic, who own all the IPN centres and a few other ones. So we're working with them closely to be able to support you um, with your practices, with your practice managers and practice owners as well. So that really is, for me, CPD now is actually practice-based um, and the college really sees that. And I'll show you how to log some of that as a practice soon. So it could be your practice manager or a lead GP and your practice can log on behalf of others. Yeah, there's actually quite a few questions around about how does peer learning and case yeah. discussions and things work. So that, that's yep. part of what, what you might be able to do as a practice work together. Absolutely. And I'll show you exactly how to mm. do it in just a minute. And also mm. the practices can do it themselves, but also if you're connected to a provider, um, they can actually create peer group learning sessions for you. This question by a solo GP, um, good luck on you being solo. I did that for a while, but it was very hard work, um, about would accreditation preparation um, contribute to it absolutely yes, does. does yes fantastic yep. yeah fantastic um there's lots of questions um would my preparation for retirement um in 2024 <laughs> <laughs> count for my cpd i guess it depends what preparation you're doing and i would i would agree Margot. it does i think it depends what the preparation is if, if you're reviewing yeah. your practice um i guess standards and things for a handover um and implementing those types of things and absolutely it would yes yeah. And I mean, I think we know the answers to you probably covered some of them, but just really kind of drilling into some specifics, things around like attending a webinar would be coming generally into that educational Yeah, so activity. webinars, um, just in the nature of what they are, are an educational activity. Obviously, yep. we, we right now we're doing a bit of a Q&A, but because of the, the number of people online, um, it's not as we can't really class it as reviewing performance so these are educational activities and what you'll find after this is um Bertha at the team at the PHN have put this through our system and they will be uploading and you should hopefully within the next week or so um see one hour of educational activities in all of your statements yeah yes there's lots of I guess what we're saying there's lots of varieties as well yeah. as working out how it all fits into those categories yeah. I guess is the challenge um, so the, the, again, we're talking again about sort of um, continuing education, such as doing a master's degree would obviously count. So the question was really about if I specialise in mental health, if I do my um, CPR in the training, plus I do my master's of counselling, um, would that, um, and if I ask patients to fill in feedback sheets after sessions, can I cover it all in while doing my master's? You probably could. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. being creative, I think, yeah. isn't it? And making sure yeah, that look, you're covering those things. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. And the significant work in the, those activities that are completely related to that particular scope of practice. Yep. Oh, I like this one. Uh, does my daily meditation count for self-care well-being component? <laughs> I said be creative, didn't we? So. We did. We did. And, and, and you know, so self, self-care self review is definitely part of, of this. Um isn't necessarily doing that daily meditation, but it might be part of you might reflect on how that has made changes to you and to how you practice in particular would be the element that you would put in. But def you can't probably, you'd have to be able to say, can I justify that to the Medical Board of Australia? And, you know, if there was an audit to say, how did that impact? If you reflect on it, I think you could for it for a portion of time. And that's the difference. Does that make sense, Margot, to you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I guess the other big subject is around teaching. So whether you're registrars, medical students, yeah. or um, or your ro role as teaching, um, how does that um fit into these? 
Yeah, categories. so teaching and even facilitating us. If you're um, so Margot, for instance, is is facilitating tonight. Um, if you have present, if you have developed content, um, if you so when you teach generally, you're developing content. You are um, sometimes getting someone to look at it and provide feedback. You are delivering the content. You generally there's an evaluation form that comes back and you get feedback. So from all of that, it's actually a really um, it's a mix of education and reviewing performance. Um, now, if you're a supervisor, um, what you will find, and there is some information I'm going to go through specifically related to supervisors, you find supervision is related is um, education activities reviewing performance but if you're um, a new supervisor with the college for instance and you do the there's prerequisite activities on our GP learning system we'll capture that for you there is certain things you do that the college again will also capture and then we'll get to give you we're just making it at the moment a really simple pdf electronic that will show you what the college is going to capture what you can capture as a practice and what you can capture individually as well but we've got I've actually got a document that we can show you that's already on the website to how you can do that. Yeah, I think there's a lot of questions around teaching and I guess also that yeah. reflection from um, the registrars on how you, you know, what the, the teaching that you're doing and so Absolutely. you cover a lot of things. Yeah. I guess the other big one is around investigation. So if you're involved in a clinical trial with researcher or investigator, would that fit into the CPD? It does. Absolutely. And I think it's it's been a gap specifically. We get lots of different GPs working within a clinical trial or part of being asked to or people doing clinical trials that require that GP component um, to be valid um, about how that does fit. So absolutely, um, a clinical trial, depending on what part of it you're in, um, whether you're developing it, whether you're in it, whether you're bringing patients in and reviewing the data and reviewing their their outcomes or their um are they are they fit to fit into the clinical trial things like that or exemptions um again it probably is a bit of you're, you're learning about it you're doing the learning you're reading you're um probably listening you're doing you're looking at your data potentially um as well and you would also be then having that feedback or reflection on on any changes made so again depending on what it is it could be all three so just like if you've got a case-based discussion happening but it's um it might be looking at data against a standard and against other data. That particular part of a case-based discussion would be the measuring outcomes. If you're just all sitting around discussing it, it is that reviewing performance. If it's a purely didactic, someone giving a, um, like an orthopedic surgeon, for instance, giving a, a presentation, that is going to be education. So it really does depend on how and what happens. And we've got some really clear examples. Margot, do you think it's time I'll go and show some of these examples and how to log yes, some of these? Yes, please do. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So there will be time again for some more questions, everyone. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to show you, um, I might go to log first. You can see here there's log and you can see there's um, a few different varieties of this. I'm going to go to quick log first. Now you can see here we've got our activity title. So um, what I'm going to do just to show you the difference, I'm going to say my, the activity that I did was in a, um, an evidence-based journal club and I'm going to say that I finished it today. Um, and really my journal club was, we did, we did it over two, the last two week, last three weekends um, and it was an hour and, and it was actually I'm going to do 1.5 and 1.5. Now, again, what we do love with this quick log is it really is about reflection. Um, so what did you learn? What changes could you make as a, in your practice as a result? As I said about evidence, there is, an, there it's, is very easy to either drop and drag or browse files to upload evidence, or you can just click submit. Now, you can see that's already gone through. Um, now, if I really was in an evidence-based journal club and I was audited, I, what I would want to have is a, a just a document that had when I what the evidence was, what the journals we looked at, um, what the topics were, and who attended. Um, but you don't need to upload it all, um, but you need to keep it. So you can see that that's gone through. I can actually then view in history, and you can see here that I did my professional development plan. Um, I've also done some committee and boards that I've been recording and I've done that evidence-based journal club. So that history is there. I can also visit 
view draft activities. These are activities that I have got and I've saved but I've not submitted. Um, some come through to approval for the college. So these might be linked to specific requirements where there's extra credentialing required. Generally CPR we approve as well and advanced life support. Um, and if any activity has been returned for any reason that will be there. So it's really clear what, what to do. So that's Quick Log. So you can use Quick Log for um, any webinars, any um, webinars or anything you go to really, um, any reading. If you're seeing a patient and you wanted to research, needed to research medication afterwards or refer specialist referrals or other things, you can keep track of those things you happen that you do every day. Um, and that information is all there for you. So the other options with log is CPR is another one. So obviously you need to do this one every three years. Um, you it will come up with your RECGP number when you when you're logged in as you. You're going to put the the title in. Um, generally CPR. Now the Medical Board of Australia has given us direction on CPR that it is only educational activities. Um, completion date and the date was today you do need to upload evidence for CPR because it is part of that credentialing um, you would upload it and then that would be against your um, statement and you'd be able to see it in there I'm just going to save without exiting because I don't have anything to upload at the moment sorry exit without saving and because I'm in my magic system as a, as an employee all right, when you log in, I'll be able to show you when you go to the college, you go to my CPD and it takes us back to the beginning. And we're just going to go back to log. You can also log advanced life support and any specific requirements. But Margot mentioned before around GP led activities and your practice based ones. And this is where you put these. So what we do, we have got our GP led activity and this can be individual or a group. So you can do this something you've done just on your own um, or, or with a group. Now you can see here there's some information in all of these forms around what they're for um, and you'll also there's always hyperlinks for guides and templates. This particular form is the group one it used for evidence-based medical journal clubs, mini audits and audits, peer group learning and plan do study act cycles and I'm going to click on guides and templates in just a minute. What you'll do, the lead GP will put their detail, their RSCGP number will come up there. Um, you'll tick which one of them it is. So mine was, for instance, that medicine based journal club. You'll put your title in. How many hours? And as I said, this is afterwards. How many hours go in after each have been done in each one? It will give you a total activity start date and completion date because generally these ones do roll over onto more than one date. And then you can add the surname and GP, RACGP number of all the people that did it with you. Um, we want to know why was the activity undertaken? A brief summary of the activity. What did you learn? What changes are you going to make as practice as a result? Were your learning needs met? Um, was it relevant to your practice? And again, that file upload. And we do always have that note there that you don't need to provide evidence, but you do need to keep records. Um, you would tick, I agree, you would submit. And yourself and any other GPs that you put into the activity will receive the hours. Oh, and it's done it again. Okay. Go back to my CPD. Now, what I wanted to show you, because there's some great resources here for you, because I've shown you the form to use, but obviously what do you put, have to put in those different types of activities? So under those forms and templates and under resources, you'll see guides and templates. Now, there is a guide and a template for medicine evidence-based medicinal journal clubs. There's one for general practice research, audits, peer group learning, peer reviewed journal articles, plan to study acts, random case analysis and supervised clinical attachments. So those are all there for you as templates to use to capture any of those as well. Now, just in case you're looking for an, a provider activity, um, which might include audits and um, peer group learning as well on our RACGP activity, you can see we've got our browse function that's really simple to use. Now, we've set it up so it's much simpler, this triennium. You can filter by RACGP-led activities or external provider. You can see all the numbers really clearly. You can search by whether they've got 
just purely educational activities, measuring outcomes activities. And you can see both, they'll come up with some of those hybrid ones as well, whether they're blended e-learning face-to-face. Specific requirements, you can search by those, whether they're rural, how long they go for, which state they're in, and even a date range. And you can add in here your areas of interest, depending on what your scope of practice is. You can also bookmark particular activities for later. So by using this bookmark, and then once you do that, if you click into here, you can see they're the activities that you've bookmarked. And for some of them, and this is check, just like Margot mentioned earlier, if you would like to, um, you can see, you can view the activity. We're going to go into this check. When we view the activities, you can see that it's got the course overview, the learning outcomes, um, available sessions. And what you can now do, which we weren't able to do last training, is you can register and go straight into the activity as well. And there you can see we've got check. So it is a much improved system. So before I go into the, actually what I might do, my God, I was about to break, I might just show everyone where the solutions are. Within our activity, just gonna, now within the activity within resources, there's two different documents that have got significant information in more detail than what I've covered today. One of them, and I'm just going to check if you can nod, Margot, has this gone to my your RSCGP solutions? Thank you. So this is downloadable from the page. So this is solutions um, based on different scopes of practice, which is exactly what we're talking about. I might just make it a little bit bigger. There are solutions here for full or part-time supervisors, specific interests, locums, um, working in a hospital specific, medical educators that we talked about, researchers or not even not in a clinical role. It's got some things to think about. I'm just going to scroll through because I could spend all day going through this. And then it's got an example of, for example, full-time or part-time. It's got examples of where you the breakdown needs to be. And it's got some solutions. So your focus on RSCGP check units, which is what we've been talking a bit about today. So you use the check units as the core of your program. Each unit comprises 10 hours of hybrid. Um, and you can see here, it's broken it down for you. Another solution, which we've talked a bit about is you focus on your practice meetings. And you can see down below that you've got your professional development plan, your mini audit, how many hours of practice meetings. And then the other solution, which was brought up as a question, we focus on practice accreditation. So it's also got information there for you and then journal club. So the solutions there for all of those different, here's one as a supervisor, all of those different activities. The other, um, and we can send these out to everyone if you'd like as well. So the other one I'm gonna to go to is what's called activities for your CPD, which is slightly different to that solutions one. It's a bit more detail about how those measuring outcomes, reviewing performance and educational activities are broken down for you. So I'll just make this one a bit bigger as well. Specifically what our definitions are, what the breakdowns are. And there's activity guides. These are hyperlinks, activity guides to each of the traditional education activity types, to the group learning, specifically ones about reviewing performance and measuring outcomes. So you can see mini audits are there, case review analysis is there. And one we love is that multi-source feedback as well. Um, and also there's professional leadership activities. So if you're on a committee or a board, you can capture that as well. Um, if you're on RECGP committees and boards, that can be captured. Even some providers might capture that committee work that you do with and for them. Um, and you can see teachings there too, as well as supervision. And then there's much more detail into each of those. There's our formal certification we talked about before, higher education. It can be a mix of the three. Um, and Enrollment at participation program leads to formal certification or credentials. Um, and it's a, how to do it there is quick log. Some will do provider and quick log. So we've got all these solutions and ways to do things here for you and also mixed into group learning activities. So I can't possibly go through every single scenario today, but by um, sharing this and going through this with you, most of that information should be there for you. So just to give you one final before we go to some questions, if I go back to my CPD and you click on resources, there's a whole list of other, that solutions document and everything are there. And there's 
RACGP events, guides and templates, the Journal of General Practice Clinical Guidelines, all of those are here for you as well. So what I might do, I might stop sharing just just for a minute. Um, I can always go back to sharing if I need to. Um, Margo, was there other questions? There's about 15 minutes left. Yeah, there's lots of questions. Sure. I think um, some of them may have been answered in yeah. going through those guides. I, thought, I must say the templates look good because that might clarify things a little bit yeah. for us. Um, but I think a lot of the questions really come um, into specific things, such as one um, I want to ask is the health pathways, which is writing yep. sort of reviewing guidelines and writing where does it fit and how does it fit where did the boards and what sort of an activity is that so there's many questions um, about specific things but maybe some of those guides might actually help they do uh, we've got specific that. examples so committees just to give you an example of a committee so if, if it's a really active clinical committee where you're all discussing and reviewing guidelines for instance how we've mapped those I would say generally they would be mapped as half and half of measuring sorry half and half of educational activities and reviewing performance so do you need to work that out for yourself yeah. so you attend yeah. an so activity and you work it out if if that's something that you're not doing so the RACGP if you're on an RACG committee we will be mapping that capturing that for you um, some providers we're, slot, we're educating providers that these are activity types that they can do they will when you attend they'll be giving that to you but if you're attending something that is separate from that but related to your scope of practice or to being a GP um, it, it could be a business meeting related to your practice you know what I mean um, you can absolutely capture that and if you're going through data and like if it's a practice meeting relating to business potentially you know and even Medicare billing um, and you're looking and comparing data that that then would be that measuring outcomes component if you're not so much comparing the data but you're reflecting and getting feedback on different like if you're clinical guidelines, if you're mm. updating clinical guidelines in a practice um, for, or writing them, then that would be a mix of review and performance and education. So we're hoping that the activities that we attend, I mean, it's run by the college, you'll be able to divide it up for us into the so, different categories. Yeah, so when you go to a college activity or a RACGP provider activity, which obviously um, PHN is, um, when you go to an activity, it will have logos on there saying it's an approved activity and it will already have a logo that states how many hours in each of those activity types. What if I am a provider? So we've got quite a few GPs out there who do yep. well, not just run peer groups, but run other educational activities that may not be accredited as providers to the college. Um, how will that work for the rules around the, the education they provide? Yeah, so if someone um, is an education provider and a GP attends an activity, um, what that means is that education is we've got um, CPD standards and education standards around that activity to ensure that it's relevant to general practice. Um, to ensure there's a need, um, it's linked to GPs are involved in in the development and uh, determining that need. And part of that is um, when that activity happens, hours and that mapping of activity types is done for you. And when you turn up and go and complete either complete the activity or attend, the hours are uploaded. If you go to an activity by someone in a group who's not a provider, that's absolutely fine. You would use Quick Log to upload that. So they may give you a certificate. Um, of how many hours it was it may not have the breakdown of activity types but you should be able to determine um, especially using those guys that we've got what other info whether what it is and you would quick log that time yep. other really good question is around specific interest groups so for example I need to get a certain number of points to en enroll in the local um, antenatal care program yep well, how will that actually translate across yeah so we have well we've got I think over I'm going to get this wrong. <laughs> Over 30 specific interest groups. We we love the specific interest groups. They are at the moment actually each individual group is looking at activities and mapping, not just education for for you, um, but they're also creating many audits related to education. So it might be there's a topic, say the dermatology specific interest group might have um, an online learning and some webinars. But linked to that, you'll be able to log in and see that and download a, a say semi pre-filled template for an audit or a mini audit that has those pre-filled questions to ask, what data to go and look at, or how many patients and what, what you would be looking for. So those specific interest groups are actually going to um, have information on probably Probably through our GP learning system not there yet just to let you know this is an evolving space we're updating it all the time and adding additional um, features and solutions for you so those specific interest groups will be creating and they are right now um, audits 
um, online forums, peer group learning opportunities that are mapped to that particular interest type. Yeah. Lovely. Um, just a few sort of admin things. How long do I need to keep my evidence for? Uh, and I um, got that information confirmed today. <laughs> <laughs> it is um, a three-year cycle plus a year. So it's four years and that's from the medical board. We got that in writing today. Is anybody going to be monitoring what I'm putting in? And um, I think you did say that maybe some I'd, things won't be approved. So how does that sort of work? Yeah, so from an admin, when something is uploaded, um, if it's through the quick log system, it will be automatically approved unless it is CPR or an advanced yep. life support or related to a specific requirement, which is different to specific interest. So a specific requirement is something like anaesthetics, um, medis medical acupuncture, um, um, mental health so it's a for psychologically psychological focus skills those things require additional adjudication by a third party so they come through to us in our CPD faculty offices otherwise but you'll see that that it's waiting um, approval you'll see that in that system I showed you where your drafts are they'll be there otherwise everything else is self-approved and from providers it is automatically uploaded. So you would be notified if something doesn't get approved? Yeah, it'll be yeah. it'll be in that. And we'll generally contact you and say we've got some additional questions. In terms yeah. of um, what we check under the medical board's requirements, every CPD home is required to check 5% of activities. Yes. So yeah. um, that that is something that we will, we will do. Um, but it, it is a, a touch-based check-in and, and a review. It's not something to be scared of. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a question around the doing my plan. Can I do that at the end of the year? Uh, you can, you can, yeah. So obviously, yeah. we'd love you to go in at the beginning of the year and plan, plan, you know, plan the year and then reflect. Um, we do know how busy you are, so we'd, what we'd love you to do is in the next couple of months go in and and do that. Yeah, but we'll be sending out reminders. We'll be um, there is an app, so we've got a brand new My CPD app coming out um, for everyone in February, and that will have those notifications pop up. Obviously, if you have them activated, but there'll be those reminders there as well. And there's a couple of specific things, and I think these probably are related to things like your scope of practice. So yep. specifically, if I'm doing CPD activities at the Australian Institute of Company Directors um, as an RSAGP CPD activity, if that person is actually on boards and committees, can they count that part of their educational activity? I would say if it's related to their scope of practice. Scope of practice. So yeah. If yeah, so and th that would be the key here. So your PDP and everything that you do is related to scope of practice. So if your scope of practice wasn't related to business management at all, but you went along and did something that was not was in something not related. <laughs> so it's, it's about using that logic and common sense that if someone said to you, was that related? You could go, of course it was. This is what I was doing and mm. this is why. So it's, it's yep. using that common sense approach. Yeah. Fantastic. And so other specific things such as if I'm a beta test of a medical software, will that qualify for the new CPD? So there's some very specific questions. Some very tricky questions. Very tricky questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say if that is software that you're going to be using within your practice. Mm -hmm. Yep. So again, related to what I'm it's doing. It's related exactly. to your scope yeah. of practice. If yeah. that's something, so just say it's related to um it's, it's something related to cardiac and you were looking at implementing that as a trial and using it for your patients, then yep. I would say yes. If you weren't, generally weren't someone that saw that type of patient, um, you were just doing it for the fun of it and just giving it a go, it would be a potential, but I really would love, we'd love to see it related to scope of practice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another interesting one. What about um, if I have clinical conversations with specialists? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. Lovely. Um, and and, and think, a peer, sorry, and a peer as well. So specialist and a corridor conversation with a peer around um, how things are done. What do you think? How should that be? Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, and if someone has a special interest group, um, has a peer support group for, for special interest and they discuss cases only, would that be considered reviewing performance? Yes. Yes. Great. I think we're all gradually we're getting, getting there. there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think it's just really understanding the lingo and how it all fits together, yeah. doesn't it? Um, doing surveys for AGPAL accreditation, would that be reviewing performance or does no. that fit somewhere else? Some of these things, I don't know the, <laughs> the exact details of what that means. Yes. So what I'm going to do is I'm not sure, but the answer would be yes. If it's related to scope of practice and that's related to practice and accreditation, the answer would be yes. How that works, I'm not quite sure, but we can find out the answer for you. Yes, we might be able to answer some of these more detail yeah. later. 
um, community-based activities like giving a talk um, regarding breast cancer or to, um, to a group. Definitely, be you'll, be, you'll well. be researching how that is, who the group you're talking to, you'll be presenting and you'll probably be getting some feedback. Yeah. Uh, so that might come into all of them then. Could I it? would or say education and review education, performance. Every, yes. You're not probably, you're not looking at that yeah. data. You're getting feedback, yeah. but not looking yeah. at the data. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Um, gosh, there's so many questions. Teaching mm. as an external clinical teaching visitor, would that be reviewing performance or monitoring outcomes? <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh, what do you think, Margaret? Well, I guess you're reviewing the performance of the person that you're so sitting with. Um, yeah. But and I guess it might be a little harder to monitor outcome unless I guess yeah. you're going back and, and seeing that person again and seeing what's going on. Yeah, so. Um, so you certainly can review your performance as well. But exactly. your so, um, feedback to them has been a useful hmm. thing for them. Yeah, so reviewing performance. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And if anyone doesn't agree, please put me in. <laughs> well, in some of this it is around nuance and it is around how, how it's actually how it's actually happened, not what you might think yes. might happen. Yeah. Yeah. And then we're talking about the specialist conversations that don't usually last 30 minutes. So um, you would be suggesting that I would add up over a month that I might spend a half an hour yes. on the phone with a specialist. So I don't have to be averaging that out and potentially yeah. keeping a bit of a record of who I'd spoken yeah. to over yes. that time. Yeah. yeah. Okay, lovely. Um, where else? Um, I have done that one. Um, when we discuss our patients, specialists or registrars, then well, that'd be the same, wouldn't it? Whether speaking to registrars or colleagues, you're saying about patients again, you could yeah. be adding those things up again. Yeah. Um, CPD lecture organisers change their educational activities so that GPs can also get the reflective or the measuring outcome mm. points. Is there so a pretest, reflection, or practical uh, terms? Thanks. Yeah, look at and we we've been talking about this lots as a CPD group, and we're trying to work really closely with our providers around this. So often you might have, for instance, a webinar. Just say this webinar was around cervical cancer. Um, it could be that afterwards we've got a pre-prepared mini audit that we can send out around that to do in your practice. So we're suggesting that to our providers. Um, it could be that you you go and just uh, do it, go and decide that on your own. It could be that we've said to you this again using that topic. We might have asked you to look at some data before coming along. Um, we might have asked you some reflective questions before coming along. So by top and tailing it and packaging it, um, both yourselves and for providers, you're able to actually um, really have that hybrid, high value hybrid type of activity that you are you are doing. That means you're collecting more than one activity type, but absolutely and incredibly valuable. Um, we're actually looking at developing some resources around that reflective questioning after an activity. So if something's purely a webinar, we could we'd be sending out, you know, how did that impact your practice? What changes might you have made from, from attending the activity? Um, we'd probably suggest you quick logged it unless the provider was saying, send it back, we'll upload it for you as reviewing performance. But they can be built into activities or you can add them onto activities that you've done with a provider and quick log that section of it. Yeah. So you're not limited by what the provider's no. um, logging. And, yeah. But it also means for yeah. providers, they can do, they're not doing something for the sake of it, they're doing something to add meaning and to impact change in practice. What if it's been loaded up into the wrong category? I want to change categories because I need more so, points into a different category. And that's where you'd contact your local faculty. Um, and that's right. by by email, by um, by phone. Yeah. And that's probably the same answer then for this one. Where can we send our specific questions regarding activity types and logging so that we do things correctly in the months to come? Yeah, look, so and I would email? say, yeah, your your national um so that, that your national CPD team, absolutely. And we'll pass those details on specifically this New South Wales cohort. Um, but but on our website as well, there's links to all of the faculties if you happen to be swapping states. Um, but yeah, local faculty is there to help with all of those. We're asking about, with, will this webinar be logged? I'm I thinking the answer it is will. yes. yes Absolutely. Good. So, so we might all get see a, And we should have put a test in the chat. How many hours will you get and what will it be? It'll be an hour of education activities for tonight. It'll be heartwarming because I, I going back to zero is always a bit of a worry. When you <laughs> 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 Looks a bit shocking, doesn't it? So um, what's some other examples of um, monitoring outcomes? So this is... Even for me, this is one of the harder things to do because we're all used to education. Reviewing is reviewing performance is something that we think that feedback is something we it's easier to describe. Um, I think sometimes with the measuring outcomes, we talk lots about, you know, audits and mini audits. 
we had a conversation with a locum this week around how, how to do that, you know, in that sort of scenario. And we talked about an option where you could say, okay, I've got um, my next five patients, <laughs> you know, what sort of, um, what am I seeing? What what types are they, especially if you're in a new sort of place and you don't have access to practice data because I know that not everyone has access to practice data easily. Um, so, you know, what type of patients that might be, you know, what, what, and look, I'm not a GP, um, but so we actually are developing some of these for you at the moment. So looking at that type of thing, um, if you're involved in research, as well as lots of, of obviously the measuring outcomes in research, different types of um, that higher learning side of things as well. Um, what I would suggest is have a look. We have it. We do have a comprehensive list on those and we'll be sending those out for you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm thinking um, perhaps the PHN has got some things they can help oh, us with too because we're I doing. I would say PIPQI. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. PIPQI. Yeah, PIPQI. <laughs> <There's> not... <laughs> so, PIPQI, um, we we're, get we're, sent we're... Um, data regularly. So yes. that's another way of actually saying that we're monitoring our outcomes. Yeah, and I was yeah. actually talking yeah. to um, to Beth earlier around PHNs and PIPQI specifically and other activities like that that um, could be recorded by a provider for people as well or by the practice yeah. and practice Fantastic. accreditation as well. Yeah. Uh, we're actually running out of time and we haven't, I'm really sorry, I haven't I managed to get all of the questions done, but I will just throw in a compliment. So we've had a compliment. Angelique has been wonderful helping many GPs to understand and get through the last training. Thank her. Glad she hasn't burnt out and this will be a busy year for her again. So thank you. And I'm sure that extends to all of the people at the college who've supported us, which is fantastic. So thank you. Um, and the, my, my last one, uh, um, I guess, is maybe I should have asked it earlier, is why does it have to be so complicated? So... <laughs> <laughs> what I'm going to say is, and you'll see it in my slides, the Medical Board of Australia, this is what they've put in place for all doctors. So yes. not just for general practice. The college advocated heavily for, for many, many years um, to have some change for general practice in this space. We are trying to make it as simple as possible for you all to have it just collected as, as you're going along. It's just those hours are just being collected and collected um, by, by us, by your providers, by your practices, um, and make it as simple as possible for you. So it is complex. We're trying to make it yes. simple. Um, yeah. But also if you have an idea and if you'd like to have suggestions, please let us know. We genuinely want to work with GPs on the ground to make this as simple and easy as possible so it has less impact on your on your day-to-day -day lives. Thank you so much, Sharon. Um, there's lots more questions, but we have run out of time. I'm really sorry to those that we haven't had. I hope I've managed to get most of them across. Um, but that's been really, really helpful because I think a lot of us are feeling a little uncertain um, and change can be a little bit challenging. And I think just understanding in a busy world how all of the different educational activities fit in. Um, so that would be um, really, um, and that's really reassuring that we can actually contact the college to get some specific please, advice. Please do. That is what what our CPD teams are here for. Yeah. yeah. And I think some of the, I hadn't looked very much behind the scenes on my, um, where I can log my points. There's some really good templates and things there. That's there certainly will be surfing around there as well. So thank you so much. And, and definitely um, thank you to Kimberly and um, to Angelique as well, who've been typing away some of the answers, which has been fantastic. Um, and thank you to the PHN team. Um, and do I need to hand over to you, Bertha, for anything for the end of tonight. Thank you, Margo. Yes, I'll just wrap up. A huge thank you to um, Sharon for your time tonight, Kimberly and Angelique in the background with all the questions. Margo, you're wonderful as always. Thank you very much. Um, we are busy planning all the activities that we're going to be running throughout the year. So please bear with us and check our website as they will be uploaded um, as we go. And obviously with the support from the RACGP. So thank you everybody for attending tonight's webinar. Hopefully we answered all your questions. Um, we will be sending out some resources and a recording of the presentation, but if you do have any questions, please get in touch and enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you.